clinically, vestibular cochlea, desperately important. Because as I said to you, it's the nerve of hearing responsible for balancing, positioning of the head in space, the movement of the head in space. Unfortunately, there aren't any good clinical tests that would get you very far. I mean, you can test anyone's hearing with a wristwatch or by whispering, but it's very difficult to standardize it. And what you do is you occlude the opposite external acoustic meatus and you apply the sound in the normal way to the one you are examining. And then you switch over. And some people say, whisper what I'll whisper back to you whilst they wobble the other one around. But really, these days, hearing is better tested with an audiometer because they can tell you whether there is loss of hearing and they do that at various frequencies. So they can tell you whether there is high tone loss or low tone loss and count the lesion. Now there are two old clinical tests that are still used sometimes for the hearing part, for the auditory function. The Rene test and the Weber test. They both use the tuning fork. And in the Rene test, simply with the tuning fork, you're comparing air conduction with bone conduction. And in a patient with a receptive lesion, a nervous lesion, where there is disease of the nerve only, the normal difference between air conduction and bone conduction is preserved. That is, air conduction is better than bone conduction but in a patient with a conductive lesion. There are two types of lesion, receptive and conductive. Conductive usually means you have middle ear disease. All the ossicles are glued together. And although you have deafness in that ear, bone conduction becomes better than air conduction. But they're not very reliable, I don't think. And audiometry is very forward because, as I said, they can test hearing at different frequencies and tell you whether there is high tone loss or low tone loss. But with the Rene or the Weber test, at the very best you can say is that this patient is receptive or conductive on a Weber or a Rene test. So although there are one or two clinical tests that are used for the auditory function, for the hearing part. There are none for the balancing part. For the auditory function, yes, simple things we can do, but for the vestibular function, there are no tests that would get you far at all. Patients will have symptoms, all right. I mean, if you have vestibular disease, you classically get attacks of nausea, vomiting, and terrible vertigo. Now, vertigo is when you feel things are rotating around you, or you are rotating around other things. It's different to dizziness, where you just feel unstable. And if you have vestibular disease, vertigo is a possibility. So it's very important to establish whether patients have true vertigo. And the most important disease the most common cause of that is a thing called Menier syndrome. Menier syndrome of unknown etiology, in which the inner ear apparatus develops a sort of water retention, high drops, distension of the vestibular apparatus, and patients get acute attacks of nausea, vomiting, and terrible vertigo, very distressing, very uncomfortable, very unpleasant. So if they were sitting here, they would fall down. If they tried to stand up, they would fall down. And no one knows really what causes it. The one thing they would have though is nystagmus. Because as you recall, when I was talking to you about nystagmus, I told you there are three causes of nystagmus. Cerebellar disease, brainstem disease, and vestibular disease. So the clue would be there, and that would be a very important clue. And if your patient was up to it, you would say, look at my finger, and you would see nystagmus. And what you would do is you refer them to the ENT department, where they would do a thing called calorics. Calorics is where they squirt warm 
and cold water into your external acoustic meatus in order to induce the flow of endolin in your vestibular apparatus. And if they weren't able to do that, they would write back and say they were unable to induce nystagmus in the diseased organ. So calorics and those that test auditory functions are not done on the wards, but are done in an ENT department by an ENT surgeon. So that would be a quite a common referral. Would you kindly see my pleasant patient who has acute attacks of nausea and dizziness to see whether it is possible due to vestibular disease, in particular many air syndrome. So vestibular cochlea, desperately important clinically, but you really need skilled help to get further. You need an ENT department and an ENT surgeon.